Hey guys, I am in the orchard and this deer fencing along the perimeter has been up for 20 years this summer. And it's pretty much, I mean, it's held up well. It's that rubberized fencing. But down there, past the quad, in that corner, the fencing has been knocked down. And so I think a deer got in in that corner and then got trapped in here, couldn't get out, and then decided that I needed a new exit. And so he made one, right? <laughs> and so um, he, she decided that this post was in the way and decided to take it down and made me a new door. And so now that is cemented. It was cemented in. So um, that's a 20-year post. And even though it's treated, it's still, I mean, they do... Over time, they do start to rot. And so um, it was cemented in, and the first six inches or so, or the top six inches was not. And so I can't dig that down unless I wanted to spend all afternoon. So I'm just going to dig a hole next to it and put this new one in right here, this new five-inch post. And so I know what I'm doing this afternoon. Okay, let me reiterate. When I say that it's it's done fairly well or held up, um, I don't mean that it's it's worked perfectly well where, you know, you put it up and then just ignore it. it. Every year, two or three times a year, I've had to repair it where the deer have knocked it down and I've tacked it back up. I've put zip ties to it. And I, sh I should say that what I meant was for the cost because it wasn't that expensive, but it's done its job for the cost. And I'm tired of fighting it. It's down in like six or seven places now where it has ripped and went to the ground and I've you know zip tied it back up it's just it's been a pain and so um it I need to bite the bullet and I need to buy some real good welded wire galvanized fencing and I went out and I looked at the price and it's like 500 bucks to do or five to six hundred to do 325 feet I think I've got here 325 or 350 but anyways um I know my wallet is going to hurt for a while, but I just, I have to do it, and I wish it wasn't so expensive, but this will, this will outlast me now. It's going to be good for another 30, 40, 50 years, who knows how long. But my kids and my grandkids will enjoy it. So, anyways, I've decided I'm going to bite the bullet, and I'm going to do it. See ya.
You know the old saying, if it looks straight, it is straight. <laughs> when it looked straight, it was way off. This is dead on perfect. And it don't look straight, but... I think it's the hill, the slope, that makes it look like it's not straight. Disregarding the one in the back because that's broken off, it does not look straight. But the level says it is, so we're good. Okay, let's see the deer go through that. Now actually, I, sh <laughs> I really shouldn't, I shouldn't brag because a pride comes before a fall, right? I mean, the minute, the minute I start to brag and boast, they'll just go right through it. I mean, I could build an eight foot cement wall and somehow the deer will get over it, around it, or through it. So I really should not brag. I, okay, let's put it this way. This will be a lot better than what I had. Okay, so I'm putting this welded wire on the outside and leaving this rubberized fencing. And this stuff is actually, it's still pretty strong. I'm really amazed after 20 years that it hasn't, like the UV hasn't like degraded it and stuff. But you know, it's, I mean, that's what it's made for, I guess. I shouldn't be too surprised. But I'm leaving it as more of kind of a visual barrier. So when a deer comes up, that a deer would be able to see more than just this welded wire. And, you know, it just, I think it's just more of a visual barrier. So I'm going to leave it. There are places where, like right here, where he or she just rammed right into this, that post right there. I'm going to try to probably pull this up and just attach it to this. But, so what's, what's going on here is this welded wire does not come in seven or eight feet. So this is a five foot and I'm going to put a five foot and then I'm going to put a three foot from the top of the post down and let it overlap onto this one. It's like seven and a half feet total, close to eight. I think it's like three or four inches from eight feet. But anyways, it'll overlap a few inches and that'll be nice. Okay, so the first five foot roll is on and it goes down there right about there. That's about 100 feet. So I've got another 40 feet or so to go that way, and then I turn the corner and go the other way. Hey guys, do you want to see what an absolute moron I am? Check this out. Okay. Now this, the wire fencing here, the new one I put in, it went 100 feet from all the way up there. And came down here 100 feet, right? And then it stops. And I thought, I'll drive a T-post in, and then I'll attach it to the T-post, and then I will start the next roll, attach it to the T-post, then continue on, and then attach it to where I have wooden posts. <clears throat> okay, sounds logical. I have a U-post down here, and I thought, I don't want to drive it right next to the U-post because, you know, I just don't want them right next to each other. So I just moved it over a little bit. So I moved it down to here. Well, here's the moron I am. I put it far too far away to attach the wire, the fencing to it, it wouldn't reach it. And that was such a rookie mistake, okay? Because I've, I've driven in literally thousands of these things. And that was a rookie mistake. I thought, okay, well, what I'll do, I'll just put another one in. So I put another one in right here next to the U-post and then attach the fence to it. And then I'll just pull that one out. Sounds reasonable, right? It gets better. I put both of them in backwards. The, <laughs> your fence is supposed to go up against the knobs. And then this, uh, the, the, the fence wire has got like a, it's a V-shaped. And that V-shape goes around the back part of the T-post, which is also V-shaped. So you, you put your wire across here, and then your clip goes like this. And then you attach one end of it to the wire you bring it around here and it attaches to another piece of the wire I put both of them in backwards I'm either going senile or I'm just an absolute moron it's probably a little bit of both
Now I know I'm gonna get heat for doing it this way. Normally what you would do to stretch this fence, you would go down to the end and put a two by four on each side and you would bolt it and then pull on it with a come along on one of the posts or something. But you know, that's how I've installed chain link fence before. But this here, down in the garden, in the, you know, in the orchard, nobody even sees it. So I know I'm putting stress on one of these, but this is just the easiest way for me to do it, just like this. And that stretches it pretty doggone tight right there. So I'm not gonna worry about it. Sometimes you just do things just to get them done. And once I get it over top of that one there, now that one's in. And I've got this bent nail here. Spin it around. Do this again. And get this over top of that one, just like that. And that looks pretty tight right there. And then I put one of these staples right on the four-way, right across. And the honest truth, this works perfect for me. Okay, so there's the first 100 feet of the top part of the fence. And it actually came out nice and straight. I mean, it's not perfect, but it actually, I mean, it looks good. And now I've just got about 250 more feet to go. Phew, that was laborious. Okay, so it is done. It took me about five hours, I would guess, to do all of it. All of the plastic or rubberized Netting is has fencing has been replaced with this welded wire and um, I think it came out good, but now if you'll notice this is kind of funny uh, This post here just pulled right out when I was working on it. It was loose So I thought that's strange. So I just picked it up and it pulled right out Obviously it wasn't cemented in which is really strange and so when I cemented it in before I put the the gate back on I made sure that it was straight. Well, lo and behold, after I did that, now you'll notice that this post had kind of, over time, leaned out. And so it is not straight. And so you'll notice that the gate is a little kind of kittywampus, kind of off kilter, which, you know, no big. That's just, that's just what happens when the earth settles. But um, I can adjust it here. I can pull this out unscrew that a little bit and make that a little bit more level but I'm not too concerned about it I'm gonna have to do something here because this isn't it's only supposed to keep the deer out I don't think they're gonna figure that out so anyways uh, it looks actually it looks really good except for here where I've got this this old fencing and surprisingly where the deer haven't knocked it down and totally destroyed it it's actually really strong, which is kind of amazing. But just because it's ugly in spots, I'm gonna pull it down. I had a bunch of it down here, right here that's all bunched up because it was just so knotted up and it was nasty. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut all that off and take it down. And so this new fencing actually should last more than 20 years because it's galvanized. I think overall, I think it looks great. And considering a dope like me did it all by himself, that's even more of a miracle. But anyways, the fence is done, and it's time to start working back in the orchard here. Okay, so I'm out in the back lot near the 10 by 10 project. And the only thing I can say about the new fencing is it is much more visible. The, the, the old fencing, I couldn't even tell there was actually a fence there. It was, very, it was invisible. It just blended into the landscape. With this new one, 
you can really tell that there's a garden down there. Now, for some people, that may be a negative because they say, well, it kind of you know takes away from the beauty of the landscape. But to me, I look at it and I say, hey, that's an orchard down there. That's the, you know to me, that's a that's a sign of beauty. But uh, for some people, it may kind of be a negative. But for me, it's not. I kind of like it. So, anyways. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and don't forget to subscribe, and we'll catch you later.